everyone, this is Mindy Egan and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be playing with some more products from the new release from Gina K Designs and I am going to be creating these tropical backgrounds with my rubber brayer and my gel plate. I will be using the Botanical Leaves stamp set which is a 6x8 stamp set with these large leaf images and I thought tropical backgrounds would be perfect for them. To start off with, I am going to bring out my 5x7 jelly plate. I love using this for backgrounds. And I am going to place this on my the door of my Misty tool. I have a piece of white cardstock in there just so you can see what I'm doing. I learned this trick from Jennifer McGuire and I've stuck with it and really love it because I can kind of move my gel plate out of the way or turn it if I need to. I'm going to be using the colors Tranquil Teal and Key Lime from Gina K Designs. And I have a piece of cardstock there off on the side is what I'm going to brayer onto when I pick up the color. And this is on top of a slick surface just to catch that overspill of color. So I'm starting with Key Lime at the top and Tranquil Teal on the bottom. And I'm just dragging that across the gel plate. You want to make sure your rubber brayer is clean. So I just kind of rubbed that off on that cardstock. And now I'm brayering this over that gel plate background where I applied the ink. Just going back and forth to pick up that color down the gel plate and then brayer that off onto that cardstock. Now what's really fun about this is nothing ever comes out perfect which is why I like doing it. And when you brayer off on that cardstock, I like to go in different directions to create kind of an abstract background. I also have another piece of white cardstock here to pick up that color and create a print. And this is kind of a two for one. You get some beautifully blended backgrounds by picking up that ink that's left over on your gel plate to create that print. To create that full sheet of cardstock as a brayered background, I'm going to be repeating all of those steps numerous times until I achieve the results that I'm hoping for. So once again, I laid down that key lime and Tranquil Teal on the gel plate, picked it up with the rubber brayer, and this time I turned my cardstock a little so I could brayer it in a different direction. Then bringing in that same piece of cardstock, I picked up the ink that is on the gel plate. So while I'm going through repeating those steps numerous times, I want to point out a couple things. One of them is, is that have a stack of cardstock off on the side ready to go because you never know when you're going to have another idea or maybe you want to add a stencil on top of this. So I do suggest having, you know, a few sheets of cardstock sitting off on the side. My second thing is that if you want to clean and apply some different colors, you can either wipe that down with a baby wipe or I usually just add a couple drops of hand sanitizer and wipe that over my gel plate and pick it up just to remove all of the color. I really love on that brayered background how I do have some significant lines on there from the brayer itself and I also have some open spaces. I think that's what makes it really unique and abstract. So I'm finishing off this last color here and then I'm going to call this good. Now I really wanted to use this particular background but I completely messed it up. I did not condition my stamp very well so I just kind of skipped through that and I'm going to walk you through what actually does work. Normally I leave in my mistakes, but I kind of wanted to get to the point on this one. So this is the Botanical Leaves stamp set. I hadn't used it. Condition your stamp, which either means do stamp off a couple times on scratch paper, maybe ink it up with embossing ink, rub your hand over it, just really condition it so that you get a clear application of ink. Here I arranged them to create my own patterned background and I'm stamping it down in obsidian black ink. Now see, it, this, there's a lot of lines on here. There's a very detailed lines. So I'm going to ink it up a couple times, really push down on those areas where I'm kind of not getting the most clear impression. So two or three times should do it. The background that I'm stamping on is actually the one where I did the pull, where I applied the cardstock to the gel plate and picked up that ink. So both backgrounds work really well for this. Now this is a background that I had on hand that I created I think with a different company's inks but if I were to stamp this with Gina K Designs inks I would have used probably Wild Dandelion, Tangerine Twist, and Passionate Pink ink. I just thought this had a very tropical feel to it so I wanted to put it to use. 
So since I used the Misty, I just left my leaves in place. I inked them up with the Obsidian ink since now my stamp is nice and conditioned and I'm getting perfect stamping results. So here are those two backgrounds that I'm going to be turning into cards. To do that, I am using the Master Layout 7 die. This is for a mini slimline die. And I love this because I can move this around in my background and pick and choose where I want to die cut that out. I'm going to be using the Birthday Bash stamp and die set for my sentiment for the card. I really love that bold birthday wishes and it also has a coordinating die and the smaller one is going to fit perfectly inside of a circle. So I'm just stamping these in obsidian ink onto some white cardstock. Keep in mind obsidian ink does take a little bit longer to dry so you want to make sure that's nice and dry before you die cut or run through your die cutting machine because that ink can transfer to your plate and then it might smudge your next project. I just really love using the obsidian ink for stamping. I'll stamp these down a couple times because that bold one down at the bottom there really has some thick lines to it. So I wanna make sure that that is completely filled in. Then I trimmed these down into some smaller strips. I'm lining up the coordinating die for my birthday wishes, holding it down with the best ever craft tape from Spellbinders, and then running this through my compact cutter from Hero Arts. Now this one, I'm using a circle die from the Master Layout 3 die set, but you can use any circle die that fits the sentiment you have picked out. After these are all set and die cut out, I'm gonna add some small foam squares behind the sentiment, peel off that backing, and then I'm gonna place this on the front of my panel here, just a little bit up from the center. Same thing for my circle sentiment. I added foam squares behind that, removed the backing of the foam squares, and I brought in my first card there just to kind of have a similar placement because I really like where that came up. These are gonna be mini slimline cards and the die actually trimmed it just a little bit smaller than three by six. So I am creating a card base with heavy white cardstock and I trimmed that to six by six and I'm scoring it at three inches. Then I am adding some dot runner behind my panel and I'm gonna add that to the front of my mini slimline card base. This is going to leave just a smidge of a white border around the edge. And I'll go ahead and do the same thing for the birthday wishes. I'll add the tape runner behind that and add that to my mini slimline card base. So that will finish up my card projects for today. I thought about adding embellishments, but I really just love the tropical feel that these cards have. This stamp set would also be really great if you wanted to color them in, but I also think it's fun to make your own pattern backgrounds. I hope you enjoyed today's card projects. I will have all of the supplies listed down below in my video description and over on my blog as well. Here are a few other videos I think you might enjoy. Thanks so much for stopping by.